Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is doing really good. Um, so today I was um, inspired to make this particular video after meeting someone that I found inspirational. And you know, it's often that that inspires inspires or gives you the passion to actually talk about something. You read something, you experience something, or you meet someone exceptional. So let's get into the topic. The topic I'd like to talk about is that feeling that we're left with after a relationship or a transaction with a narcissistic person. And it's often a feeling of being less than, you feel that you're not quite good enough, maybe, and you're wondering who who am I or what was that all about or what did I just go through? So you've a, you've a lot of questions um, that can precipitate a wonderful journey into yourself and into a better life and can teach you a lot about yourself if you wanted to. It depends on your approach to healing and your approach to the abuse that you've gone through. It is within you to actually capitalize on what's happened to you to make the best out of the dreadful situation and trauma and pain that you've experienced. To make a gain out of that or to be become a victim and to stay a victim and to do what narcissists do and blame other people, which is understandable and it's certainly understandable initially, but it's not productive. And it's, again, it's what people that aren't accountable, that are narcissistic, it's what they do. And they remain stuck in cycles of abuse and cycles of destruction, and they never escape that very unproductive way of living. So for those of us that want to grab the bull by the horns, so to speak, and get on that wonderful journey, even though it doesn't seem wonderful at all in the beginning, let's just have a look at this because I think this is really interesting. It's the feeling of not being good enough. And where does that come from? First of all, as we develop and we're growing, we all have self-doubt. Now, the narcissist had a lot of self-doubt initially, and they developed the narcissistic personality disorder as a defense mechanism, or as we like to call it here on this channel, an offensive mechanism, because that's what it end, ends up being in order to defend the narcissist's true self and the true feeling that they are not good enough. They overcompensate by a superiority and a lack of accountability. But that's them. What about us? What about normal people? Or as normal as we can be? I know we're all some sometimes a bit crazy and consider ourselves so and that's fine because perfect is perfect. Perfect is imperfect and imperfect is perfect. No human being is 100% perfect and sure it would be a very boring world if we all were but we just like to get on some kind of a healthy level where we're not destroying other people. So taking it from that point of view, we all have introspection. We all have the ability to introspect and we all have an inner critic. And sometimes that inner critic can talk way too loudly to us. And it's not a good thing to to let it jabber on in your head all the time and tell you that you're not good enough. But what sends your inner critic into overdrive? Very, very often it's as a result of a relationship with a narcissist. So in the beginning, you know, when the narcissist is love bombing you, and again, there are different levels of love bombing. Some people experience not an awful lot of it. But what the narcissist will hone in on is something that makes you feel of value. It gives whatever they hone in on will be making you feel some sense of fulfillment, basically, that will attract you and attach you to the narcissist. But 
initially, so the narcissist is love bombing you. The narcissist sees you as the solution. They see you as wonderful and they tell you, you know, and make you, <clears throat> excuse me, make you feel m much more than. They make you feel like you're absolutely out of this world. And you kind of go, oh, <laughs> well, that's nice, you know. <laughs> Maybe I can believe that. Maybe I can. This is an easy way to do the inner work. Now, this isn't you doing the work on yourself. This is taking out outside validation and it does get us into trouble. So it's better to have built that confidence within our own self-worth from ourselves and from working on ourselves. But that's an aside. So the narcissist gives you all this drip, drip, drip of dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and all these hormones that make you feel powerful, that make you feel happy, that make you feel, I am amazing, you know, this is fantastic. And of course you associate that with the narcissist, but you do feel, you know, in an elevated position, your confidence is high. Before now they start to do the devalue your confidence is high although it's not built on strong foundations you know it's been elevated falsely by the outside by the narcissist but as i say you do feel more than you know a great sense of yourself and that you are m even more than good enough that you're fantastic and the narcissist is feeding you this it's like you know, when you feed a baby in a high chair and you spoon feed them, this is what's coming in, you know, all the time. And then when the narcissist is reaching the stage, and we've gone into it in other videos, is reaching the stage where they devalue you, they're kind of, you haven't stayed the same. Your level of fuel hasn't stayed the same. Your level of admiration hasn't stayed the same for the narcissist. And the narcissist is insatiable anyway. They want you to escalate this false um, feeling of euphoria and that, you know, that you feel when you say meet somebody new that doesn't and poss can't possibly last if it's to develop into a normal, healthy relationship. The first six months may be outstanding, but love develops after that, real love. But the narcissist never goes on to that stage. So when it's time for that to happen, in the narcissist's eyes, you fail them because you haven't maintained their level of empowerment, their level of feel good, you know, feel good hormones that they and that you haven't maintained being the solution to all their really negative feelings that they truly have about themselves. So you've managed to kind of keep them on a fuel level and they feel the fuel is dropping because unrealistically they expect it to go on or even to get better instead of leveling out like a normal healthy relationship would. So they work on you, you know, it's nothing to do with you, but they're focusing their negativity on you because of the way they feel themselves. So you become the target of their bad feeling, their lack of fuel, their lowering fuel supplies and their unrealistic expectation that after the first six months, say, of the relationship, you know, a normal high of meeting someone and falling in love, they expect it to go up and up instead of to level off. So you start to feel and they start to pro project and also to tell you that, well, I you were amazing in the start, but now that I'm getting to know you, I can see that you're not so amazing and that you're not good enough. And you come down off this, you know, this finally feeling wonderful about yourself to kind of feeling, oh, no. You know, they can see that I'm not really all that and that maybe I'm not good enough. And, you know, they're really close to me and they've gotten to know me and they can see that I'm not good enough. And your inner critic starts to chat to you and to tell you, you know, that that maybe they're right because they're always, you know, 
propping themselves up and pontificating about things and giving off this superior vibe and saying, I'll only wear designer clothes and nothing, you know, I need this and I need that. And I'm just so damn superior that um, kneel at my feet and, and kiss my toes. You know, they're really, they are putting themselves up there on a pedestal and they're kind of looking down upon you at this stage. So we all have this basic intrinsic healthy quality of introspection and it gives us things like say performers when they're going on stage it gives them stage fright it's that it's that acknowledgement that you know maybe that that you have to really try hard and you hope that you're going to be good enough but it's that the query it's that you're not crazy you don't think that you're 100% amazing all the time. So it's it's natural and it's healthy. But the narcissist is going to help you overdose on your inner critic. It's like winding it up and you begin to feel truly your closest and your closest and dearest is finding fault with you that maybe they really see the truth. And then you're focused all on the narcissist because it's always about the narcissist. So it's always about their life and what they're doing and you're helping them or saving them or propping them up or being of servitude, you know, servile to them or trying to get the relationship back on a good level. So you're focused on giving to them and their life being OK, because somehow they get it around to if their life's OK, your life's OK. It's a very subtle um series of manipulations but that's the way the it kind of goes that's the trajectory and then towards the end you know when they give you your final lashing when it's just before the discard and then they, they can give you another love bomb in between but when it's really getting kind of nitty gritty and nasty enough and you've had a few rages and they they finally tell you well you're definitely not good enough and I'm leaving you or else they just go. You're not even good enough to be told that you're not good enough. So they're off on their merry way. Of course, you're left with a huge amount of confusion. You don't, you know, particularly if you haven't received the education about the narcissistic personality disorder and other types of cluster B disorders. So you're really left, you've put all this effort into the narcissist and helping them and sorting their life out and, you know, believing in the future faking and questioning yourself and trying to improve yourself in the relationship because the narcissist is telling you that the relationship isn't working some of the time because it's your fault. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry guys, I just, sometimes it's really... It gets me so annoyed. It gets me so annoyed when when you think of what different people in the community have been through and you hear what people have been through and you know what you've been through yourself. And for the lack of education and the lack of understanding, we've gone through this torment. How and ever we can make something good out of it, but it is frustrating to to know that so many people don't know about this. So you get to the end and nar Narcissist has gone, Mr. or Mrs. Narcissist has gone off to the next um, solution in their life or to go on Tinder and find the next solution in their life. And you are left wondering, who am I? And I haven't been concentrating on my own life for the last number of years, however long it may have been. I've been supporting a person who has a disorder and who blamed me for everything. And I took that blame on board and I'm left feeling not good enough. And you, you need time and support and education to reevaluate yourself realistically and to do work on yourself and to be with people who know you and love you and to find out who you are again and to get the narcissists, can I say, twisted way of looking at life straightened out. 
So it's like, say, you know, when a chain, say, gets all hooked, you know, twisted round and into little knots or the Christmas tree lights, you have to untangle them each year. It's basically like that to get a sense of who you are back again and to get a sense of self-worth again and to rebuild confidence and to know and love yourself again. Because we should all love ourselves. Everybody is lovable and worthwhile in their, in the best sense. A disordered person, a narcissist, is difficult to look on favorably because they're all about destroying everything around them, including themselves. And again, I would say that to have compassion is a wonderful thing, but be very careful that your compassion doesn't entangle you further into trying to help them because they cannot be helped. It's really hard to accept they cannot be helped. You have to manage a situation if you're dealing with a narcissist because it never goes away. That is that is who they are. You have to believe it. And I was just thinking there recently, what can you say about understanding the narcissist? And I would say if it walks like a duck and it looks like a duck and it says quack, it is a duck. And honestly, we have to be kind to ourselves and kind to someone with a personality disorder, but from a distance and understand that it's a destructive thing to have a relationship with them because it's only going to destroy your life and your life purpose. So guys, the message today, I, I think is you're more than enough. And that has to come from inside. And it's a good idea to give yourself the time because you are worth the time. And you have a, a valuable purpose in life. Your life has a value. And you can live that true value or not live it. It's your choice. But if you live to your full potential and in your true value, that will spread out into the world and the world needs you at this moment in time. There are too many narcissists out there and more developing and there's too much darkness out there. There's too much fraud. There's too many people being passive aggressive. There's too many people being destructive and stealing, killing and destroying which is what narcissists do. I'm not saying every, they're all narcissists. They can have different things wrong with them. But in order to, to kill the darkness, we have to shine the light. And you have that ability. It's a choice that you can make to feel that you are enough, that you're good enough. And indeed, you could actually be more than enough. So... Yeah, that's that's the message for today. I met so many amazing people and in coaching um, and just in everyday life. And I think post narcissistic abuse really opens your eyes up to the to the good ones and to the qualities that help sustain humanity, basically. So overcoming narcissistic abuse, please believe in yourself and do the work that you need to do to have that as an integral belief in yourself. To put the best of yourself out there, because what you put into the world, the legacy that you leave matters. Thanks, guys. I'll see you again soon. Take great care of yourselves. Bye for now.